Hi, this is Brendan Davis from Bedrock Games and the Bedrock Blog, and I'm here with Dion for another episode of Wuxia Weekend. And tonight we're going to be talking about the 1972 film Finger of Doom by Bao Shu Li. I hope I pronounced that correctly, and apologize if I didn't. It stars Ivy Ling Po, and it's a uh, kind of a dark film that's almost shot in the style of a horror movie. And it's it's about this really unusual technique called Finger of Doom, where Ivy Ling Po and uh, another woman uh, uh, played by uh, Park Ji Hyun, and I'm probably not pronouncing that correct either, but she's sort of another sort of villain in the movie. Uh, they both use these metallic claws with needles on them and jab them into the backs of people's necks and turn them into sort of like mindless slaves, mindless kung fu slaves. Um, there's more to the story than that, but that's the, sort of the gist of the of the of the uh, of the basic concept. Um, and Dion, I know that you hadn't seen this movie before, and this was your first time watching it. And I gathered from the initial conversation we had, even though I didn't, I refused to hear any of your actual opinions until the show started, that you had strong views on it. So, so why don't you tell me what you thought of the movie? I'm very disappointed in this one. It's not going to get a high <laughs> score for me. Um, it, well, the picture quality was grainy, so it was that wasn't good, and it was filmed dark, like you said, like a horror film, but it was neither scary nor creepy. So that was weird. If you're going to shoot it like a horror film, at least have some horror in it. Um, I don't know. I just, I got through the whole movie. I just was not impressed with it. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, just the finger of doom. I was expecting so much more than sticking a finger (laughs) with a needle, a gold or silver needle in the back of someone's head to get zombies. What were you picturing with it? Like, so like you touch somebody and they get destroyed or something more dramatic. I don't know what I was expecting, but Mm. that definitely wasn't it. Mm. Maybe like an iron finger technique or Mm. I don't know. I didn't expect there to be, some kind of metal contraption involved. I thought it was just going to be regular, the regular fingers that maybe had some extra strength or some extra power to it that was able to do something different. I don't know. So, but you you were disappointed though. It sounded like you did not enjoy this movie. I, I, I feel bad. I, I quite like the movie, but I, when I was watching it again, I, I was like, I don't know if everybody's going to be on board with this movie for a number of reasons. And I could sort of, you know, I, I was sort of tabulating them as I went. And so I wasn't surprised to hear that you didn't like it. Um, I, but I didn't know how you were going to go. I was like, I could see Dion going either way on this one. Like, I could see you liking it. I could see you not liking it. Um, and I thought actually that the fact that it wasn't scary was going to be a plus for you. I thought you were going to, you know, be like, well, it got like the atmosphere of a horror movie, but it wasn't terrifying. So that was good. Right. But, uh, but I I think you're right on that. It isn't, it is, it isn't a scary movie. It's, it's shot like a scary movie, but you're not really with, with maybe a couple of exceptions. There's not really that many points in the film where you feel fearful because you sort of are following around two characters from that sect. And so the mystery that would have been created if it was just one member who was the villain is gone because the other character that you're getting into the head of is, is also creepy and weird just like she is, but is nice. It's so, so it kind of, it kind of nullifies the horror that they would have been able to achieve. Yeah. And there was no real suspense or mystery to it you knew who the bad guy was from the beginning Mm. you knew who the heroine was no one turns against anyone really um except for you know his friends get turned into zombies but that's not you know their fault Mm. but you know there was just really no oomph to it Mm. i don't even know how to describe the oomph it was just the story it was okay i'll probably Mm. never watch it again Mm. but and it kind of was a little confusing too at yeah. the beginning. I will agree with you on the point of confusion as well because every time I watch it, I'm like, I'm going to pay attention to every plot beat on this because it's not like you don't know what happened. By the end of the movie, you feel like you have all the details, but it's a little unclear how all the details fit together. And I have a hard time telling people the story of this movie from beginning to end easily. And that doesn't make any sense to me because it's a fairly simple story. 
you know, it, it, it right. it's, you know what I mean? It's fairly straightforward. So I don't understand why that's the case. And I feel like it just doesn't address some of the connecting points all that well. And that's where it gets a little bit confusing. And it also skips over a couple of things that are strongly suggested, but never really clarified. And so you don't, right. you don't really know exactly what happened at like this particular, like this, when, when, um, when the sky wolf cult is killed, you don't really know all the details about that. And it's a little bit confusing trying to piece, piece everything together after the characters are talking about it. Do you know what I mean? Right. Um, so, so I, I would agree with that. Um, I think for me, part of the confusion was you had two women that looked almost identical and um, they were dressed identically and they well, I think both... they look very different though. Like that, like one of them has a very round face and Ivy Ling Poe has a very long face. You know what I mean? Like, and I got that eventually. Mm -hmm. I could tell them apart. And their hairstyles were different. One's hair was like longer. Yeah. Ivy Ling Poe's hair was much longer than the other ones. But when it first started out, I was confused because they're both traveling around in the the red casket. And they both have their, um, their Kung Fu zombies in white. If it hadn't been in one scene, I can't remember which one it was, but if it hadn't been for the hunchback being with, I think it was when they were both trying to follow, um, what was it, Sky Sword and Earth Sword when they each were following the caskets and it turned out to be two of them. That's where I was a little confused because mm. I didn't know which one was which, but if it hadn't been for the hunchback, I would have never known which was the evil one and which was the, oh, the I see good one. Saying. No, that, that I agree with you on that because when the women are in the coffins, especially the disciples just look the same because they're all, they, they right. have the same costuming. And so that is that, that that's, I think something that does lead to some confusion in the movie as well. Um, now, did you, did you, how did you feel about there being two important female characters like that? Were you, did, do you feel that they were misused? Do you feel that they, that they worked in terms of the story? I thought it was great to have the heroine and the villain be female. Uh, and they were evenly matched pretty much. It, well, except for the one, the evil one learned a stronger technique and had to use the gold needles. Um, but I thought that they were pretty evenly matched. I just think that they should have focused more on the women and not so much at one point it was the focus on the brothers yeah um i think they spent too much too much time on the brothers if they had just established for me that the brothers each had a little part to play and then went on with the women i think that they should have focused on the villain a little bit more yeah i i would agree with that because i i feel like this is a really good movie for for ivy ling po as like the as the heroine and I'm not as interested in the brothers. Do you know what I mean? Like the brothers are fine. And I think it's, I think I like the, um, what's his name? Earth sword. Uh, was it earth sword or heaven sword? Heaven sword, Lu Tien Bao. I liked him as part of a duo with Ivy Ling Po. I thought they kind of had a, a nice sort of, uh, I don't know, like a heroic couple thing that was sort of developing. Yes. I mm -hmm. like that, but I didn't need the other brother in the mix. And it, it was sort of like, Rather than have it be about him and his brother, have it be about him and her the whole movie. I think that would have worked better. Um, and I and I yeah. agree with you. We could have got more of the villainous too. You know, she was, she she, she was. I mean, she she was a perfectly great villain, but we just maybe didn't get enough of her over the whole movie. Yeah, it was kind of like they forgot about her, and in some instances, especially when they focused on the brothers, I kind of felt like she was. She didn't have a strong enough presence to leave her out through the middle of the movie. Yeah. If she had had a stronger presence, then it would have been fine. She, her presence didn't loom over the whole entire film yeah. like some of the villains do. Like a Ku Fung villain or um, a Lo Lie villain, you might see them at the beginning and yeah. back again at the end and maybe a blip in the middle. But their presence is so evil and so strong that you can feel them throughout the movie. 
but hers, you kind of forget about her in the middle when she's not on screen. Yeah, I would agree. She's she's almost more like a little lord type character. Do you know what I mean? She's not. I mean, she's a villain, but she's not one of these, you know, uh, these. I don't know how to like you said. They're sort of these looming villains that sort of are. Uh, you know, there, there was something almost a little bit immature about the villain. Like, no, I don't mean that as a criticism of it either. I just mean the character felt like she was supposed to be a little bit self absorbed and not. Um, you know, she wasn't. Uh, I don't know. I, I feel like you, she would have worked better as a villain if you got more of her. She's not the kind of villain that works in small doses. Um, no. And the hunchback and um, the other guy that was with them, I kind of, for me, I felt like maybe they might w- might have turned against her yeah. and been the bigger villains because I think they had a stronger presence okay. in the film because we saw them more throughout than she actually had. Okay. I mean, I did like that we had, like, I, I, I like the bringing in a hunchback. Like, I thought that horror movie trope worked really nicely for the visuals of the movie. I, I mean, it, uh-huh. it was very obvious, but I, I, I like that they're like, no, this is definitely, like, the director just watched a bunch of Universal or Hammer movies and is now, you know, determined to make something that's got those elements in it. Um, they might have been imperfectly ported in, like you're saying, because... Again, the movie isn't scary. The villain, the villain was. Again, there was. I don't think there was anything wrong with her performance. I just feel that like the uh, the villain could have been stronger or could have been more frequently used. Um, and 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 also, you know, they were clearly going for a thing where these two women felt like vampires, and they could have used that to more frightening effect. Do you know what I mean? Yes. Um, like like I, like the movie I kept thinking about actually during this was Intimate Confessions of a Chinese Courtesan because that uses a lot of vampire imagery even though uh, the villain in that isn't a vampire. Do you know what I mean? And so right. I was thinking that that movie kind of succeeded more at the sort of hinting at a vampire angle than this one did. Um, and it definitely, um, Confessions also definitely used its two female leads a lot better yeah. Um, their presence presence was much stronger in this one. Yeah, in that one in confessions. Yeah, I, I, I would I would uh, uh, I would agree with that. I mean, I, I like this movie. Don't get me wrong. I just think that there are definitely valid criticisms of it being raised at the. You know what I mean? And um, and it's interesting because both movies came out in seventy two. So I'm not sure which one came out first. Um. And and even if it if one of them did come out first, if there would have been time for it to have had enough an, an influence, um, it looks like Confessions came out five months after. If Hong Kong Movie Database is right, um, so so I don't know. Maybe 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 this maybe we had to get this movie in order to get Confessions because Troy Yuen was able to see this one and then you know build on because i mean there's there, there there seem to be striking similarities between them in my mind um but uh but yeah i don't know i think uh the the stuff that f- for me worked was just sort of the, the overall atmosphere the movie created even if like you said it wasn't terrifying but i, I like that it just sort of felt like it was set in a world of horror but that it was explained through all of the tropes of wuxia. Do you know what I mean? So you have the mm-hmm. doom finger that creates these zombies, but it's all explained as like sort of meridian control with a poison. Do you know what I mean? That right, sort right, of thing. Right. I like that because whenever, when I first saw the movie, my initial thought was, oh, wow, those look like zombies. How are they going to explain that? Do you know what I mean? Like what's, mm-hmm. what, cause you know, you're going to get an explanation. Um, and I, and I, and I like that the movie provided one. Um, and, and also I think for me, the, the other big thing that, that I think just really makes this movie work is Ivy Ling Po as the as the as the lead heroine. I, I think she she really works in this movie. I, I, and I want to get to the fight scenes in a moment. I wouldn't say that this film is filled with the greatest fights in the world, but there's sort of like a stylish way that they're shot at times. And I think that she gets sort of the the Bridget Lin style posing correctly, even if she's not doing a whole lot of like, there's not like a whole lot of real martial exchange with, with her character. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah. I think she really carried the movie for me, her and 
the guy that played uh what was it heaven sword lucian bow um i think they really carried the movie for me if it weren't for them and their relationship and how it developed i think i probably would have shut it off no i agree with you i i i really like their i, I like the uh, you know them as sort of a heroic duo in the film um well how, how did you feel about the fight scenes they were okay. There wasn't anything really impressive or anything that I was really, um, I don't know. They were just there. They were okay. It was nothing spectacular. Yeah, I, I feel like the fights in this had moments that looked good, but they weren't like, but they were like isolated shots. Do you know what I mean? It was the kind of mm -hmm. thing where like, Somebody would die and they'd be up against the wall, like at the end when the villain is killed. I was like, oh, that kind uh -huh. of looks like a cool death scene. Or, oh, like, you know, like Ivy Ling Po leaps in and then there's a shot of her with her hand extended. You know, I was like, oh, that's kind of that's kind of a cool sort of look. But the but everything else, it didn't feel it wasn't like a Cheng Che movie or something where you you really get, you know, into the the fight choreography itself. I, I thought, I, again, I thought it was, I thought the fighting was almost shot more like a horror movie. Do you know what I mean? Like, it just kind of, mm -hmm. it was like, it was keying in on these key moments that had a stylistic coolness to them. And I appreciated that. Um, so I liked it on that level. But I wasn't, uh, you know, the, the, they, they weren't, they, they weren't what you're sort of expecting in a lot of the other sort of 70s, you know, martial arts films that, that we've talked about. Um, and the lighting was so dark that it was kind of, in places hard to really tell what was truly going on yeah too so yeah. that didn't help no it was definitely it, it's one of those movies that desperately needs to be restored i think in order for us mm -hmm. to really appreciate some of that stuff you kind of have to use your imagination because it's on video i mean I, I think there are dvds out there but i've only ever found it on uh what is it video compact disc or whatever that format is the vcd format and it's grainy and pixelated and not it's it, it's 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 definitely not in great shape, um, and and I feel like it would shine a lot more if it were restored and put out on DVD or Blu-ray, um, probably Blu-ray I guess at this point. But there was also a really cool shot I thought that they did of Ivy Ling Po's. I don't know if it was Ivy Ling Po's hand or the other woman's, but they focus on her hand and they have that weird glove that they wear or the weird sleeves that they wear on their hands that kind of give like a Freddy Krueger type impression. But I liked the way the camera panned, like focused on her hand, and then her hand moved, and it was like something out of Nosferatu or Dracula. Do you know what I mean? It had like a, mm -hmm. it was like a real horror movie. Like this is how this scene would be shot if it were like a iconic horror film. Um, and so I thought that was kind of a cool, cool moment in the movie too. But, uh, but yeah, I don't know. I think the, I think the fight scenes in general, uh, like I said, it's more about the moments than than the movements if that makes sense yes um, and, and 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 so i you know i think it's it's you know it's enjoyable but it's it, you know if, if you're there to watch cool physical movement you might you might be left disappointed um and so there was uh something else i wanted to bring up oh yeah you had mentioned this uh we don't ever hear ivy ling po's character's name during the movie and it becomes a, a thing at the end of the film and, I, and, and you had said you were a little annoyed that you didn't that she didn't have a name. So I wanted to get your thoughts on that. Yeah, it was kind of annoying to not know what her name was. She kept um, teasing Earth Sword, the uh, Heaven Sword. I'm sorry that he would know the, her name when the time was right. And there were several times when I think she should have given her her name, but she didn't tell him until the end, and then. When she told him, you know, the movie shuts off because they're like kind of whispering and we don't know what she ever says. So I don't like that her character is nameless. <laughs> okay. See, I kind of like it. And I'll tell you why. Number one, there's a, there's a tradition of nameless characters in the movie, right? Like there's a, it's something that you, you, you get in, you get it in Wuxi, you get it in Westerns. Um, but what I liked about it was that final scene where she, they just kill the villain and he sees that she's aged because she dies. And then she explains to him, oh, she was using Kung Fu, basically, to preserve her beauty. And when she died, her age became apparent. 
And she said, do you want to know how old I am? And he looks away and says, it's not that urgent. I just want to know your name. And I thought that was like a nice little flirty thing. Like it was like, because the movie's so grim and so dark, but to have this sort of light moment of like, oh, they're just like a flirting couple, you know, sort of like, like they're just getting to know each other. I thought that was kind of charming the way that it, that it played out. And then when she whispers it to him, you sort of, you're sort of like led to believe, okay, now, like maybe now they become the heroic couple that we kind of wanted them to be in the movie, you know? Um, but I don't know. That was just my impression of it, you know? Um, but I have heard other people complain about that. I think, I think it does annoy a lot of people that she doesn't have a name. Um, and, uh, and so I, I could, you know, I, I get where you're coming from, but, but I felt like it was also something to give her character an air of... Like, I don't feel it was, like, intended as a thing of disrespect to her. I felt like it was something... No, they were no, to... it wasn't. It was an yeah. air of mystery. Yeah. But I didn't need that air of mystery. <laughs> I mean, the whole the whole rest of the film was not mysterious. Why yeah, bother yeah. with the name? Yeah. But, see, I thought what was going on with that is she was kind of, like... Because like, she comes to this, like, evil cult, right? She's like... she she The woman gets carried around in a coffin with guys that look like zombies. Like, she's, like, this is somebody who would expect not to be very traditional. But I felt like she was being very coy with her name because she was being a little bit traditional with him. Do you know what I mean? Like, I felt like that. I felt it was like a sign of her um, just, you know, not wanting to reveal that personal information to him because they didn't know each other well enough yet. Do you know what I mean? And then by the end of the movie, they know each other well enough and so she's they had been in enough life and death fights <laughs> up to that point that she could have said something <laughs> all right so dion's not convinced by my argument but no at least <laughs> a last name or something but uh, or a nickname or, or some, some, you know, something something to hang to hang a hat on but but uh but yeah i don't know i i i kind of liked it uh we didn't get too many other characters really but i guess we should kind of go down the list what did you think of the other two brothers um what was it they were annoying i just think they shouldn't have been there but i kind of understand their plot because um or their role because she had to turn the two brothers against him and make them zombies and then we find out that they weren't pure of heart like he was yeah and come you know when we got to the end and she makes that statement that you're wondering how your two brothers could be turned. It's because they weren't pure of heart. Um, the, what was it? Earth sword was lustful. And um, the other one was greedy. Yeah. And I was like, oh, yeah. They, I had to think back to what they did in order to show that in the movie. But they, you know. Uh, but she's it was one there, to but, point fingers to that lady. You know what, I mean? what I said that yeah. lady's one to point fingers when it comes to some of those things, um, right? Um, but then that elevated him because uh, Ivy Ling Poe's character could tell from his fighting style that he was a good fighter, but also that he was noble mm-hmm. and um, trustworthy, and she wasn't too keen on that on Earth uh, Earth Sword. Oh, and I have another complaint about the brothers. Mm-hmm. Their swords were not anything spectacular. And with names like Heaven Sword, and I know it would refer to the characters and not their actual swords and probably into their um, their techniques, but I think they should have had more lively swords and nothing so plain. But that's my other complaint. Yeah, no, well, also, I feel like there should have been some reflection of the style in... Do you know what I mean? Like, it, right. it, it was... I, I, they had these names, but they just look like any swashbuckly type wuxia character from the late '60s. Do you know what I mean? Like, it just didn't. It they didn't really stand out uh, individually, and 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 it might have helped, like you said, to have like this, like at least have one of like a brown hilt and one of a blue hilt or something. You know, right? You know? Something more identifying. So so yeah, I I would agree with that as well. I have a big complaint about these brothers, which is one of them. I forget which one. It wasn't Earth Sword. So who was the other one? Was it um um I can't remember the name of the third brother, but the third one. That whole thing he does, where he 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 he, he, he plays the practical joke in the umbrella shop, 
at the beginning of the like when the characters yes. were first introduced. That was the most reckless thing I like. How like I know it's a movie, and I know you you know you got like you, you give people a little bit more space in a film to do things that play out well, but that could have only played out badly. Like in any other film, if you show up with a mask and hold somebody's brother at knife point, you're gonna get killed. Or you know what I mean? It just yes. And that and that scene, I had thought that the brother was um, working for the evil, um, the, the villainous, and was trying to get them. He had gotten caught by the brother and then just tried to play it off. Yeah. And so that when, it, you know, you see him again later, I thought that, you know, he was going to be working for the other side. Yeah. But it just turns out he was just playing some stupid prank that almost got him killed. And, uh, yeah, yeah, I, you know, I, I don't know. I, 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 I that, that scene always kind of irritates me when I see it. Uh, any of the other characters stand out? I mean, I guess if we talk sufficiently about the Ivy Lee Po character and the, um, and the villainous Kung Soon Mao Nyong. Oh, I don't, the Hunchback. The Hunchback was an interesting character. Um, he definitely was. Oh, and another complaint about the brothers. When they go to, what is it, uh, Cheng Kung Chin's house, her other henchman, yep. um, when they go to his house and he brings out the hunchback, he just w- walks, oh, Earth Sword just walks over to him, looks him up and down, and doesn't do anything just like okay this is not the right hunchback yeah. why didn't he like pull on the beard or something i mean there aren't very many hunchbacks running around yeah so no. why wouldn't you pull on the beard or something and think it's a disguise so he wasn't the brightest bulb in the pack but that would have been the first thing i did was pulled on something it, it was a very shady story it was sort of like oh well there is a hunchback here after all but he's not the same hunchback and i'll show right. you it was, it was uh it was a little bit suspicious. The 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 like because I don't think I've ever seen a hunchback in another Wuxia movie. I mean, I'm sure there is one somewhere, but I have. This is like the first hunchback I've ever seen in one of these movies, right? So, uh-huh. so how many of there of these guys can there be? You know, walking around the martial world at the present time. You know, and two of them show up in the same house, yeah. and one never leaves. I mean, come on, it's just not realistic. Yeah, it, it was. It was. It, it was. A, it was a very. Uh, Thin excuse, um, but I did like that character, the the Chin character. Um, how how cool he was during that scene, and how you know he was because he, he's a little bit more together than the Hunchback. I feel like the Hunchback's a little bit more uh, uh, reckless and and impulsive, and uh-huh. and Chin is more collected and and wise and and good at putting on a public face and tricking people. So, like he did with the Dragon Hill gang at the, uh, or the Dragon Hill heroes at the start of the movie. Um, so I did like that scene. I just, I just do agree with you that, you know, the, the it was, it was, it was an odd excuse. It was, I, th- I think there is no hunchback here would have been a better, right. a better reason to give them. Um, uh, it, it's, it's just a little bit odd. Uh, but yeah, so I don't know any any of the other characters of interest. Um, let me see. I have to go back to the character list. No, I think that's pretty much it. Yeah, and I I think um, yeah. I, I, so I think we could probably move on to. Uh, oh wait, wait, oh. wait! The leader of the Finger of Doom clan. Now she kept saying Ivy Ling Poe kept saying her master was a he. But I thought it was a she, because everybody else in the sect was a woman. But the subtitles kept saying she. I mean he. Well, it was played by a woman for sure, right? And, and it looked like a woman to me. And I don't know. I I really don't know. Here here's what I will say. I have, pronouns in 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 these subtitles often do seem to be incorrect. Um, but. There's also the whole thing of female characters pretending to be male characters. And so between those two things, I don't know. I, I and, and because it's so grainy, I couldn't really see her outfit that well. 
So, I don't know. I feel like she's supposed to be a woman, but that's just me. That's what I felt, too, um, especially since they pr- uh, preyed on seem to prey on men. Yeah. So why would you have a male leader that preyed on men? I mean, it would have made it interesting that it was a male lead leader of the clan surrounded by a whole bunch of women. Yeah. And then the women preyed on men, but you know, it just doesn't seem like typical in yeah. this kind of movie. Yeah, I think she was supposed to be a woman. That's 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 but 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 uh, I'm a little on the fence about it just because you know because like, they did they didn't just say the that it was a he once they said it multiple times right so, but you know in in these movies when they do the subtitles sometimes they do they just start it with he yeah. and then they just keep going or yeah. they bounce back and forth and you never really know yeah so yeah I, I yeah I could I could I you know I don't know I don't know and, and and in the credit page she's just credited as leader of the finger of doom clan so. There's nothing to really go by beyond that. Um, but it's definitely an actress. It's definitely a woman playing the character. Um, so, yeah. So, uh, I don't know. Is there any any other aspect of the film you wanted to talk about before we move on to, like, recommendations and ratings and stuff like that? No, I can't think of anything. Did you have anything else on your list? I mean, nothing really. Just that I do think, I really want to single out Ivy Ling Poe as sort of just this really graceful and elegant figure in this movie. She works really well as, again, she's supposed to be kind of like a vampire type figure. I like the aesthetic that the movie establishes with, with, with her and the other lady where just sort of this dressed in white, long black hair type thing going on. Um, it, it just kind of, you know, uh, it, she's, she's sort of like an evil Zhao Long Nu or something. Do you know what I mean? It's a, a mm-hmm. It's it's a nice it's a nice look and I like the overall aesthetic of the film. I, I like the 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 horror movie vibe that it gets. I know you were not happy with the finger of doom technique. I did like the finger of doom technique. I like that it's sort of because when I first got this movie on VCD, I was like, well, what is finger of doom exactly? Because you just have this mysterious image of Ivy Ling Po on the cover. I really like the sleeves that they use on their fingers, and I and I. I like the explanation, even though I do feel it is obviously a little bit of a convoluted one because they're they're sticking needles in the back of people's necks and then it's getting into the meridians. But it, <coughs> it feels like a nice wuxia explanation to me, so I'm I'm sort of satisfied with it, and uh, and I like the look of the the finger sleeves. Um, but but yeah, I, it's oh, go ahead. It's not really. It was just that the technique wasn't what I was expecting. I like the explanation and that, you know, that the needles um, interfere with the meridians in the body and they're mm-hmm. coated with poison. And then they have to feed them like every 10 days another uh, antidote or poison something to keep them uh, following their orders. That part I thought was really cool. I just... I don't know. I could have done without the Freddy Krueger fingers. But that makes the and movie. Having... That, to me, that's what makes it so cool is the Freddy Krueger fingers. I like because again, and it's it's a, it's supposed to be horrible. And I know this is well before Nightmare on Elm Street, so it precedes Freddy Krueger. Who knows what Freddy Krueger was inspired by? But I like the look, and it's kind of got like a it's got like a dangerous but sexy look to it. Do you know what I mean? It's it's it it, it no. works for what they're. You don't think so? No. See, I wish I wish I wish Adam and Kenny were here so I could get like other opinions on that matter. But uh, m- maybe it's just me. Maybe it's just me. But I, I, I thought that it worked. Um, but uh, b- but I do like and I just in general, I like the look of the the sleeves. I, I always like whenever that we have movies where characters wear those things. I just think they look really elegant. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And so that's why I think it works well with Ivy Ling Poe because she's so elegant and graceful in the way that she she, you know, just sort of. Uh, I don't know, just the way that she conducts herself. Just she just has that air about her. Do you know what I mean? So it's like when somebody's really good at playing a eunuch or something, and they can wear those uh-huh. sleeves, and it just it, you just buy it. That's sort of how I feel about her in this movie. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Um, I, I think I think uh, it, I, I think it's more interesting to me that you didn't like the movie, though. I, I think that that's 
in a way that because it's just me and you, this would have been a much more dull conversation if we both just agreed that we liked the movie. Right. So I think it's good that we that we have different viewpoints on it, um, which brings us to the recommendation and, and rating. So so why don't I go first? Because I know yours is going to be tremendously low. And so uh, actually, no, why don't you go first? Because okay. I, I want to see how low you go. So. Because I did not turn the movie off in the middle of it, I'm giving it a two. It was okay. watchable. It just didn't live up to what I was expecting it to be. So mm. I couldn't go go higher than a two because I'll never watch it again. Okay. Um, okay. And I didn't turn it off. So if it's a movie that I can't get through the whole thing, then it's a one. But <laughs> this is a two. Um, I can only think of probably one movie I would give a one. What movie is it? Um, people are going to be mad at me. That's okay. Say it. Say it. Remember we watched, um, was it Police Story? Oh, yeah, that yeah. I yeah. Could not keep, it could not keep my attention. I just <laughs> was just like, I don't know. I don't even know what happened in that movie or at the end, but that's the only movie so far that I've seen that I would probably give a one to just because I, it couldn't keep my attention and I I tried to watch it three times. No, I remember you having trouble with that movie. I love that. I would give that movie a five, but I totally, I, I I do remember you having difficulty with that film. Um, I thought that was, the, the action scenes in that I thought were amazing, but, um, but I think you were, if I remember, you were kind of upset by the story. Like, they just kind of didn't come together for you as a story, if I recall. Yes, that, that was so, true. Um, and it is one of these movies where when you watch Police Story, you're really watching it to watch Jackie Chan jump around and do things. Do you know what I mean? Like, you, you want to see him, like, get thrown off of a bus and, you know, leap over, you know, and that's what skyscrapers. I didn't like. or, hmm? so that's what I didn't like. I, the story was too confusing. There was too much jumping around for me or whatever. And the first time I tried to watch it, I did shut it off halfway through. The second time I fell asleep. And the third time I made it through, but I really didn't remember what happened. I'm just glad I didn't have you watch <laughs> Detectives Wear Skirts, because I think that would have gone down even less well. Um, that's like Police Story meets Police Academy. Um, <laughs> and I loved Police Academy. So I don't, make, well, I don't and, know and, about and now. Detective Wears Skirts has Kara Hui in it. And, um, and see, I love Kara Hui. It's, uh, it's also got, who else? I think Cynthia Rothrock. Cynthia, Cynthia Rothrock. Rock, 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 Rock. Rock. Yeah, I think she might have been in it too. Um, and there were a couple other people that were. But yeah, it, it's... Um, so so you def, so at least you didn't give it a one. You gave it a two. So that's, you know... But I'm taking... You don't recommend the movie to people if you're giving it a two. No, I would say watch it once, but don't watch it again. Okay. Yeah, I'd probably give it a four just because I always keep remembering this movie. And Dion's making a face like I've just like I've just kissed a whale. Like a, <laughs> no, it's um, more like you just kissed Swamp Thing. <laughs> so yeah, I guess whales do have a certain appeal. They're, they're one of the more whales. beautiful animals in the in the in the animal kingdom. But yeah, Swamp Thing. Um, I, no, I like I like the movie, and I I and it and it always it just created such a lasting impression on me, and and again part of it is because it's got these two beautiful villains in it, right? So or one of them's a villain, one of them's a hero, but but also I just think it's shot in a way that's that's very striking. And the first time I saw it, I was like, oh, this is different. Do you know what I mean? It just had a very this is a very different type of movie, and. And I was immediately interested in it because of that. I was like, oh, it looks like, uh, you know, uh, somebody should be digging a grave in the next, you know, next frame. Do you know what I mean? It just had that kind mm-hmm. of a look to it. And and I, I found that very intriguing. And I also really liked, I like, the scene where it kind of comes together for me is the scene in the inn when the villain switches out the pins in the back of the heads of the minions. Mm-hmm. Something about that scene... That's where the movie gels. That's where the relationship between her and uh, Lutian Bao gels, and everything just kind of comes together for me in that scene. And and uh, and yeah, so so I would give it a four. Um, and I would say people should check it out. But I do want to put the asterisk there that Dion gave it a two, and uh, and it's really hard to get your hands on it. I don't want people spending money on a movie 
that they might not enjoy. So I would say I liked it. I think that this is one of those Brendan recommendations where it's worth checking out other people's opinions before you go and make the purchase on it. Um, especially if you're getting on VCD where you're not going to be able to see it in good quality uh, on the screen, you know. Um, so I would say hear what Dion had to say and go look at, I don't know, maybe it's got some reviews on Amazon or something, but go and see. Hey, I, I looked for reviews of this movie and there aren't that many. I think I found one or two reviews and, uh, and, and one of the reviews I saw was a positive one, but the reviewer did express some bafflement over his inability to absorb the plot. Um, so, you know, I saw some re- reviews after I watched it on letterbox. I never dot read com. letterbox reviews, but for some reason, those ones, I just never trust them. I don't know why, but what, what did, what did they have to say on letterbox? Um, one of them thought they were going to get a great movie with Ivy Ling Po kicking ass and was very disappointed. Mm -hmm. So I could understand how they felt. There were a couple of people that really enjoyed the movie. So it was between the two of us. It was, it was there. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Letterbox. You know what I'm worried about with that one? I, it's, it's their, their reviews are almost like comments. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I feel like I'm always nervous. If I go and get a review there, I'm going to get information that's inaccurate. And that's why I'm always nervous about that site. Um, nothing wrong with it because you can go there and you can see other people's opinions. But just something about the way that the reviews are structured. I, I, I kind of want it like I was looking for reviews online of like people that have blogs and stuff. Or I mean, you're not going to find I don't think you're going to find anything that was printed in a magazine reviewing this movie, not in English. Um, but uh, but yeah, so 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 again, I, I, I gave it a four. Dion gave it a two. And, and again, this is one that uh, is going to be hard to get. So, you know, Google it, see what you can find. Maybe you'll find the VCD on Amazon. Um, I didn't check eBay recently, so maybe it's available in some format on eBay. eBay. Um, and as always, you can, uh, you can support our Patreon. We'll, we'll provide a link in the description below. And next week, we're going to be back with Kung Fu Hustle. And I think people are going to be greatly revived after, after, after this week with Kung Fu Hustle. Because you can't... Well, I don't know, Dion. You haven't seen it yet, right? Is that correct? No, I haven't. Okay, so so maybe maybe this will be another two for you, and we'll have we'll have some. But I doubt it. I have a feeling Kung Fu Hustle is going to land better with you than Finger of Doom did. Is uh, this in the same vein as uh, Shaolin Soccer? Yes. Yes. Okay. It'll you probably like Shaolin get a little so- better review. What what was your review of Shaolin Soccer? I'm trying to remember. I can't remember either. Okay. I'd have to go back and listen. I I would say I think that Kung Fu Hustle is a more digestible movie than Shaolin Soccer. Like I think they're both really good films, but Kung Fu Hustle is more firmly in the kung fu genre and more firmly in the wuxia genre. So, you know, whereas Shaolin Soccer is sort of inserting kung fu into a sports movie. You know what I mean? Right. So, uh so it's 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 it you kind of have to buy into that concept to buy into the movie and uh but yeah we'll see we'll see we'll see how you feel about it but i think generally it's a well-regarded movie so i'm sure you know i know i know kenny's opinion of it, i know adam so i'm sure they'll they'll have plenty to say and uh and yeah so we'll be back on with that it's it's one that you know we've been talking about doing for a while but we've never done so it'll be interesting to see you know how that conversation goes And uh, we'll be back on next week. And until then, we will talk to you later. 